Well, good evening and welcome to this special edition of The Late Show. If you've seen the advertisement that we've been running over the last week, then you'll know what tonight is all about. We want to talk about matters tonight, particularly of a sexual nature, and uh, in particular, as they, the way that they affect the gay community. Now, let me say right at the beginning that if we're dealing with subjects that you'd prefer not to know about and you don't want to, uh, to be listening to, then I'd just encourage you to switch over and to watch something else. And similarly, if you've got people uh, who are watching the TV, uh, maybe who are minors, uh, or people who you feel you'd prefer them not to hear the things we're going to be talking about, then again, I'd encourage you to switch over and uh, watch another TV program for the next hour because we want to talk about matters of a homosexual nature. And uh, let me just explain to you what's going to happen this evening. Uh, some time back, about just over a month ago now, there was an All Mornings program where Howard shared a little concerning the gay community, and in particular about the Terence Higgins Trust. Because of that, a complaint uh, has gone into the Spanish, Spanish authorities. I want to share with you tonight what the complaint actually said. And then, so that you can compare what the complainant is saying with what Howard said, we're going to play you the clip of where Howard made his comments. After that, because it's particularly about the Terence Higgins Trust that Howard speaks about, uh, we're going to be looking at some of the um, material and information, and we're going to be doing that by Doug Harris here in the studio with me, talking to Alan Craig, who was the first one who alerted us to information concerning the Terence Higgins Trust. And Alan, of course, is a good friend of Revelation TV. He's a presenter from time to time with us, and he is the leader of the Christian People's Alliance. Um, after that, we've got a statement from the Terence Higgins Trust that we're going to be sharing with you. And after that, this time, then Howard, Doug and myself will be sharing and talking together and looking at some of the reactions that we hope we've received from yourselves by email and by text. So that's the format for tonight. And I hope that you'll stay with us for the next hour as we follow it through. I do want to encourage you to email and text us. Some of you may agree totally with the things that we're saying. Some of you may disagree with them. It, whatever your view is, it would be helpful if we could have your comments and we'll read as many of them out later in the, on in the program as we can do. So let's go straight into it. And I want to start by reading to you um, the complaint that went to the Spanish Embassy, and they've been asked to pass it on to the Spanish authorities. Of course, Revelation TV operates under a Spanish license, and therefore the complaint needs to go into the Spanish authorities. And the complainant begins by saying that they'd made a previous complaint on the 9th of January, so they say, Dear Sir, Madam, on the 9th of January this year, I wrote to you regarding Revelation TV, an evangelical Christian TV station which broadcasts under a Spanish license from premises in Fuengarola. This station is owned by the viciously homophobic Mr. Howard Conder, who moved to Spain some years ago to escape increasing censor from the UK broadcasting regulator Ofcom. He clearly sees the Spanish broadcasting authority as a soft touch, and since he's not answerable to any ecclesiastic authority and with no editorial restraint, he frequently loses control of himself and broadcasts material which contravenes both Spanish and UK hate speech legislation. On Friday, the 20th of July, 2012, during a program called Our Mornings, broadcast live from Spain between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. UK time, Mr. Conda attacked the UK AIDS charity, the Terence Higgins Trust, for material on its website, which he claimed was too debauched to describe. Nevertheless, using inflammatory language, he accused gay people of indulging in practices which anyone would find revolting. He didn't bother to check the facts for himself beforehand, and the whole purpose of his assault was to stir up as much disgust and loathing for gay people as possible. He concluded by telling viewers, we were not worthy of life. As a victim of homophobic violence, you'll forgive me if I take seriously and personally calls for my extermination, however obliquely expressed. 
I should like to make it clear that I do not oppose Mr. Conder's right to hate as many people as he likes and to express his hatred in his local church or bar. I would, however, argue that it's totally unacceptable to use the power of television to influence people to behave towards their gay relatives, friends or neighbours in a way which could easily lead to the sort of violence I experienced. Apart from that, it is appalling that a TV station can be allowed to get away with broadcasting this kind of venom, no matter what you think of gay people. We are human beings, not the vermin that Revelation TV frequently tries to portray us as. Can you imagine the uproar that would have ensued had he said the same thing about black people? Mr. Conder may justify the hate speech by saying he is upholding biblical principles, but it's worth remembering that the same book which in Mr. Conder's opinion condemns gay people to death, condones slavery, including sexual slavery and human trafficking, rape, ethnic cleansing, and many other evils. Moreover, in 1946 at the Nuremberg, civilization felt it justifiable to hang a gang of criminals who, like Mr. Conda, deemed entire groups of people to be unworthy of life. Mr. Conda, in my view, is not a fit and proper person to hold a broadcasting license in Spain or anywhere else for that matter. How the devil he got a broadcasting license in the first place escapes me and how he has been allowed to stay on air is even more baffling. I would be grateful if you could convey my concerns to the broadcasting authority in Spain. So that's the complaint that has gone in to the Spanish authorities concerning Howard Conda and also concerning us, Revelation TV, as a TV station. And it's interesting, of course, that the license is not in Howard Conda's personal name, but in fact in uh, the name of the charity behind Revelation TV. But that's what the complainant had to complain about. What we'd like to do now is to show you the program where Howard spoke and shared, which this complaint sourced. And uh, it'll be interesting for you, having heard the complaint, to now compare it to what Howard actually said. The whole program, of course, the Our Mornings program, lasted two hours, so we can't show that to you this evening. But what we can do is show you the section where Howard speaks. And I want to tell you right at the beginning that the section we're showing to you has not been edited in any way, we haven't added to it, we haven't subtracted it uh, from it in any way. It's exactly what Howard said. So here's your opportunity of hearing that section of our mornings. I was looking at something that Alan Craig sent to me, uh, or sent to all of us. Alan Craig, the counsellor uh, for, uh, was it Newham or somewhere in South London? Newham. And uh, being a Christian uh, and being one who's vigilant as well, he, he managed to, to uh, log on to the site Terence Higgins Trust. And this was uh, something uh, in recent weeks or days that he did this. And at that stage it was, and he's got apparently um, copies of those pages before it was taken down. But when they were alerted to the fact that someone like Alan was looking at them, they took, closed the site down or changed the site, but he's got evidence of this. And it was absolutely, I started to read it yesterday, because it did say you don't read this uh, if you're squeamish or whatever. Um, and, and I think we're obligated to point out to, to our viewers that what the Terence Higgins Trust uh, was recommending and, and what it was talking about apparently, uh, and I was reading this, uh, Tell us if we're wrong, and if we're wrong, then put us right. Um, but it seems that they were giving advice to young men in particular, because Terence Higgins Trust was uh, started up by, um, well, in, in memory of Ter Terence Higgins, who I, <coughs> was uh, fell foul of getting AIDS uh, and died. And this was set up many years ago at the time, you know, when AIDS was first spoken of and uh, advertised and warnings going out there. So it started off, it, albeit um, mainly for the gay community, to help people to, to live a, 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 you know, a safe, safer life if they're sexually active, particularly in the gay communities. And there was absolutely disgusting the things that was on there about how they were to, or how they were using human feces um, and what they were doing with it. Uh, and 
it, you couldn't repeat it. I wouldn't even repeat it on a nighttime program. But our viewers need to know that, that this uh, trust was uh, funded greatly by taxpayers' money, and I think to the tune of something like 15 million uh, in a particular year. I don't know whether it was every year. A lot of pat uh, patrons. Uh, that were big names in society. I won't name them in case they were wrong, uh, but I'm sure Alan's information is correct. You could, you wouldn't, I mean, it was absolutely, apart from it being abhorrent that what they were doing with the human feces and orally uh, partaking in sexual activity uh, using parts of the body that are, are meant for feces, uh, human waste to come out of. It would lead to dysentery, it would lead to all sorts of things, uh, but they, they were sort of talking about it and it sort of was like, almost like um, debauched uh, and, uh, and it reminded me of the scripture in Romans 1. It said that God gave them over in the lusts of their hearts to impurity so that their bodies would be dishonored amongst them, for they exchanged the truth of, uh, of God for a lie it said, for this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions for their women exchanged the natural function for that which is unnatural. And in the same way also, the men abandoned their natural function of the woman and also burned in their desire towards one another. Men are with men committing indecent acts and receiving uh, in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And it goes on to say that those who practice such things um, are certainly not worthy of life. The thing is that for that to have gone on and be funded by the taxpayers when uh, there are Christian organizations who are trying to do uh, really good positive things for people, whether you believe uh, in the same message or have a faith in God, but you know what is interesting is that they actually now have resorted, the gay community like this, that some of them, to defaming God openly and publicly because they, they can't deny that what he has written in his word speaks very much against homosexual practices as being um, wrong. So they now attack God. It's interesting, they moved their attack and their wrath away from Christian organizations like ourselves, but they start to speak badly about God in public places mm. and that is very dangerous for them and and just let it be known as a warning uh, that God will hold you accountable no matter how much you belittle him and your time is not too far away from that judgment just to remind you that you were made in the image of God and everything can come back uh, if you can repent but have a look at this clip you were made or you are made in the image of God. I have searched you, and I know you. You're an open book to me. Even from a distance, I know what you're thinking. I know when you leave, and when you get back, you're never out of my sight. I know everything you're going to say before you start the first sentence. You look behind you, and I'm there. Then up ahead, and I'm there too. And then the Our Mornings program continued, and uh, it just went on to talk about other things. So if you've been with us from the beginning, you've heard me read the complaint that has gone into the Spanish authorities. You heard what Howard actually said. If you've just joined us, you'll have no idea what we're talking about. But Howard in that particular clip talked quite a bit about the Terence Higgins Trust. And the person who had alerted us to some of the material that they were putting out was Alan Craig, the leader of the Christian People's Alliance and a good friend of uh, Revelation TV. And Doug's at the other side of the studio from me, and uh, he's speaking. We were hoping that it was going to be by Skype tonight, but that hasn't worked, so he's speaking by telephone with Alan. I'm just going to be asking him some more questions concerning the Terence Higgins Trust. Doug, over to you. And I think one of the first questions that we really would like to hear from you, because we know you've looked at it, just who are the Terence Higgins Trust and what do they stand for? 
Uh, Terence Higgins Trust is, a, is an organization that was founded in the early 80s. You remember that was a sort of time when the HIV AIDS pandemic almost panic society. Um, and one of the first gay men to die from AIDS in the UK was a guy called Terence Higgins. And when he died, his friends got together and decided they'd set up uh, perfectly laudable uh, aims. They set up a, a charity to deal with the whole issue of AIDS and HIV and so on. Now, over the years, it's grown and expanded and changed. Uh, and it now claims to be the largest HIV and sexual health charity uh, in the country because uh, it's broadened its services. Uh, to the general population, and as to quote from their own uh, uh, blurb, especially young people who are most at risk of sexual ill health. So they're no longer just an HIV AIDS char charity. They are what they call a sexual health charity as well, aimed at predominantly at the gay community, but also at others. It now aims a lot at our young people. So that's who they are. They're quite substantial. They're, they're quite an establishment body now. They are commended and promoted by the Department of Health, by National Health Trust. They work with the National Health Trust, Department of Education. They receive funding from the Department of Education to go into schools. Uh, they set up all sorts of projects for young people. They, I've drawn attention to they received money last year to, uh, to train 100 disadvantaged 14 to 19-year-olds to become sexual health champions mm. who will then go on to deliver peer-to-peer sex and relationships education sessions for 2,000 more young people. And they run sex education days for teenagers alongside mm. uh, youth organizations and the rest. So they're very, very much a, now a mainstream accredited organization uh, that is actively promoted uh, and their, their advice is actively promoted by the Department of Education, Department of Health, um, uh, the NHS trusts and so on and so forth. Yeah. They go I, to I schools and mean... clubs. Alan, as you say, they're a very mainstream, uh, very reputable organisation from what you've just said. Um, yeah. What started you on the quest to discover what was going on with them and sort of look behind the scenes, as it were? Well, a friend of mine drew, atten drew my attention to a couple of leaflets or pamphlets, um, health pamphlets that are available, um, certainly at least that time, they were available on their website. Uh, one is called uh, Below the Belt, and one is called the other one is called The Bottom Line. They're both um, sexual health leaflets aimed at gay people, uh, gay men, I would say gay males, and that's what they aim it at. And as I read this, these two leaflets, which I, I reiterate, this is a mainstream recommended organization, and these were at that stage, and one still is, available today, available on their website for anybody and everybody, so your children could access it very easily, and indeed might be recommended to, um, that this is readily available, and I read these, um, these supposed health advice pamphlets, and was utterly shocked, mm. utterly, utterly shocked. I simply couldn't believe what I was seeing. Mm. If, if I had seen it in some porn shop or if it was on some pornography satellite station or something like that is outside the mainstream and catering for sort of minority tastes uh, I, I wouldn't like it but I could say nothing about it but this organization is funded the majority of its funding comes from what they call statutory sources i public funding of one sort shape or the other so, Can I just uh, ask you on that, because uh, before we just talk a little more about the, the, the leaflets, um, you, you've said that most of it is statutory funding. Um, is, is that an issue for us? Uh, and does that make this all the more something that we need to be aware of? Absolutely, because we are funding it. Not only is it recommended by um, reputable government bodies, I say, like the Department of Health, the Department of Education and so on, they commend and recommend Terence Higgins Trust for its advice, and they recommend young people and, and gay men to go to them for advice, but they also fund it. And I'm reading from their accounts now. Their accounts are publicly available on the Charity Commission, and they say in the year 2010 to 11, statutory income, that's if you like public funds of, from various sources, totaled 15 million and 40,000 from statutory bodies. That's their words. Apparently, it grew by 5% in that year. Um, and that, they also tell us on their accounts, which I have in front of me here, I'm reading from them, equals 71% of their total income. Mm. So 71% of Terence Higgins Trust income comes effectively from you and me, from statutory bodies, from public funds. 
So they belong to us in some sense. It's being done, if you like, in our name in that sense. Certainly we, the public, the taxpayer, are funding it one way or the other. OK, and so that obviously makes it very uh, important to us. Could you now briefly, I know we have to be careful, a little bit of terminology here, but can we just briefly go into a little more detail as to the issues that you have specifically with these leaflets? The issue I have is twofold. Firstly, the advice which they give clearly is not health advice. It's unhealthy advice. It's medically harmful advice, and I'm going to read it to you in a moment or two so you can hear it for yourselves. But also further than that, it is simply depraved advice. There's no other way of describing it. It's simply depraved advice. And as, you, as I read it to you, if, if that, that's what I'm going to do in a moment, you'll sit, make, and make up your own mind. I want to read their words, not my words, their words, so any objective person can listen to this. And here this is from a mainstream, publicly commended, publicly funded organization. The, the mind boggles that... If you have a 15- or 16-year-old son, he could easily access inf this information from the Terence Higgins Trust website. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alan, are you still there? Yep, I'm still there. Sorry, yep. yeah. So, I mean, just can we just have uh, briefly one or two quotes from there, please? Sure. And I think, Doug, before we do so, I'd like to reiterate what Gordon said at the beginning. For those that are, uh, don't have strong stomachs or object to this sort of stuff, they really need to turn off or, or turn to another station right now. It is, I, I'm warning you, it is utterly foul. But I'm going to read their words, so it's not, I can't be accused of anything, OK? I want to read that. Now, let me read you the first one. Now, now bear in mind that um, uh, your local hospital and your doctor will tell you that when you've been to the loo, you ought to wash your hands, OK, to make sure you don't get germs. So I want to read you something which I downloaded from the Terence Higgins Trust today. It's from a pamphlet called Below the Belt. Page 31, for those that want to follow it, page 31 on Below the Belt. It refers to water sports. I'm going to use their words, OK? Water sports means letting piss get on his or your body or clothes or in the mouth or drinking it. Drinking plenty of beer or water, apple or cran cranberry juice, if you want to stay clear-headed, make sure that your urine isn't too salty and smelly. So there you have the Terence Higgins Trust is advising people how to drink other men's uh, urine. They're telling you, drink plenty of beer or water or apple or cranberry juice if you want to stay clear-headed to make sure your urine isn't too salty and smelly. This apparently is some sort of sexual activity for some gay men, and it is being promoted and advised on by the Terence Higgins Trust. Mm -hmm. It is beyond belief. Your doctor will tell you to wash your hands after you've been to the loo. The Terence Higgins Trust is advising you how to drink it. Mm. Do, do, you, do you just have one other quote so that we can just take this through and uh, we do need to move on, but do, have you got one other quote there? OK, I, I, I've warned you, this is absolutely foul, OK? I want to refer to the bottom line, another uh, uh, pamphlet they have here, page 16, for those that want to check it out, page 16, felching. Uh, in fact, I'll give you a couple of them. Felching involves sucking, usually your own semen, out of somebody else's arse with or without a straw. Rimming, this is another one, page 10 of the same booklet. Rimming is exploring somebody's arse with your tongue. As a warm-up for fucking, rimming can relax the arsehole, getting it used to being explored before taking a finger or cock. Mm -hmm. Having your mouth or tongue near someone's arse has no health risks if that person has no infections. Having your mouth or tongue near someone's arse has no health risks if that person has no infections. How these people can promote themselves, first of all, as a health charity, looking after health and advising people on health, and it puts such stuff up there, it's simply, the mind boggles. Mm. It simply is unacceptable. And bear in mind, please, Doug, all those words were their words, not mine. Absolutely. Alan, thank you so much uh, for sharing your concerns with us. We're obviously going to carry on uh, discussing this, and both from uh, what Terence Higgins Trust say and also from what our viewers say and what we will share. But thank you, Alan, very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. OK, Doug. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Gordon. OK, well, we do thank uh, 
We do thank Alan for, for sharing there. And it's not simply us accepting his words. We've got copies of both of the leaflets. That's the, uh, we've got all of it for the one there below the belt. And it actually says at the top of it, a gay man's guide to cocks and balls. And the only other one that he referred to is entitled The Bottom Line. And the wording on the front uh, page of that is all you'll ever need to know about your arse and his. And really, that's the polite part. The inside of it is, is far more detailed and uh, in much more coarse language than that. Well, we hope tonight that we would have been able to have talked with the Terence Higgins Trust and put some of the concerns and complaints that we have to them. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't wish to talk to us. Our complainant that we know has been in touch with them and to tell uh, them what kind of TV station we are. That was his words, not mine. But the Terence Higgins Trust did give us a statement. And uh, Doug, I think you've got that to read to us. Lisa Power, policy director of, at Terence Higgins Trust, said, one of the reasons we have such high rates of sexually transmitted infections in the UK is a lack of confidence and knowledge about safer sex. Some people find sex and sexuality difficult topics, and a minority would rather we didn't discuss them at all. But not discussing them doesn't stop people having sex, it just makes it more risky. Our charity was founded to ensure that people have the facts they need to have healthy sexual lives. Most of our material is targeted at specialist audiences, and the publications quoted recently by Alan Craig were firmly aimed at adult men already doing the practices referred to and not at teenagers or children. We take our mission seriously, and will continue to give clear and accurate information written appropriately for our audiences. Thanks very much indeed, Doug. And we went back to our complainant and we said, would you like to make a statement that we could read out tonight? And the complainant said yes. He sent us the complainant. Quite honestly, I read uh, the statement that he wanted to make, and I decided for a channel like Revelation TV, there was no way that I was willing to read it out. And because he said you either read it out in its fullness, uh, an edited version, or not at all, I said, OK, not at all. So we're not going to be reading it out. So that's really the, the basis upon which our program is based tonight. And some of you have already been e like emailing and texting in. Let's just read. Uh, some of the emails that have been coming in, and then I'm going to bring Howard in, and Doug's going to come and sit beside us as well. Um, uh, it says, if this one says, if there's evidence promoting a lifestyle which does not confirm to a group's public responsibility to advise others uh, to live a safer lifestyle, then Howard should raise that information. The Terence Higgins Trust thought they'd remove the information before it was seen by someone responsible enough like Howard, who felt caring enough about those he's being accused of wanting to exterminate to raise it publicly. I think I'm right in saying that uh, after it was raised by Alan, it did seem to disappear off the Terence Higgins Trust, but certainly when we here at Revelation TV Studios looked for the information a couple of days ago, uh, we could find it uh, quite easily. And if we could find it, then it means that uh, other people can find it as well. Um, here's someone who says, I personally met Howard Conda last year, uh, and you can take my word for it. He is a searching and honest human being. He doesn't agree with all my emails, but on this point of homosexuality, it's common sense how he can uh, what he said. How can what he said be wrong? Right is right and wrong is wrong. Um, how do I know? I can see it. And if we're all truthful to ourselves, so can everyone else. And according to Joe Meek John, he describes it as filthy. And uh, this one says, can't believe what I'm hearing. Adam is and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And this says, this one from Jeanette says, Howard Condor is not homophobic. He's only telling the truth. He's made nothing up. He only said what God says in the Bible. Why people who don't believe listen in, I don't know. Please don't blame Howard for telling the truth complainer. Well, we'll look at a few more of those in a few moments, but I'm pleased to say I'm joined by Howard and also by Doug. Howard, I mean, you must, you heard me read that complaint out at the beginning. 
and it's, it's very condemning of you. The station is owned by the viciously homophobic Mr. Howard Conder, who moved to Spain some years ago to escape increasing censor from a UK broadcast regulator, Ofcom. And so it goes on. I, I mean, if I was in your shoes, I, I'd feel partly very angry, and, and, and partly also I, I'd feel in despair. How, mm. how do you feel? Well, beca because I wasn't aware, really, of, of the, 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 that particular email in its entirety, um, I was quite shocked that this gentleman, who we know very well, because he has uh, been complaining for many years about what we talk about with regards to homosexuality, um, and I was shocked, to be honest. Yeah, I wasn't angry, because I know from the scriptures that when we stand up for righteousness and truth, from God's point of view, not man's point of view, um, there will be um, a howling of the devil is, was once prophesied over Christian television when it was going to, this, this was before it actually launched. And this uh, condemnation in these sort of terms um, is to be expected. But uh, the thing is that I've said many, many times, where I, I don't like talking about the subject but it's something which uh, they won't let go. That's people like um, these. Um, I don't, you obviously haven't mentioned his name, so I won't mention this person's name. But he signs himself off uh, at the end of his emails always with uh, a proud sodomite and, the, and his partner as uh, spawn of the devil. I mean, they're very clearly uh, proud of what they're doing and don't see any wrong. And I always find that in when I say or repeat the scriptures with regards to homosexuality or, or lesbian lifestyle, that I put myself in the same category as a sinner. I, I am no different to the homosexuals. Therefore, I, I, if I'm homophobic, I would be also against myself, which I, I am in a sense because I'm a sinner and saved by grace through Jesus Christ's sacrifice. But I want to say what God says on these things, because if we don't warn, it says, the wicked person of their ways, their blood will be on our shoulders and we will have to uh, be accountable to God for not telling them. And, and when it comes to the homosexual issue, it is a really difficult one because God loves us all, but he hates the sin in us and he sees everything. And I'm a, as much a sinner as the homosexual is, and you and I and Doug, we all are sinners in the, set, in the state that we've uh, come from Adam and Eve and we've, we've inherited this sinful nature. But that doesn't give us any excuse to do or practice the things. And what I find is interesting, and especially in Romans chapter one, where it says that the, those that are living such a lifestyle, those are men who lie with men as if they lie with a woman, um, and they give themselves over to their lustful desires, they not only do this, but they do it without shame. Uh, they do it and recommend this lifestyle to others. And this is what we're just seeing in the Terence Higgins Trust, recommending s a sexual behavior that isn't becoming I wouldn't want to know about that if it was going on in a heterosexual relationship. What a, a man and a woman do in their bedroom is up to them. We really don't want to know, do we? We know things go on, but it is something that goes on in private. It seems that the homosexual community wants approval from us. They've sought approval from the governments and in many cases have been very successful, including the uh, United Kingdom, where they've been able to change the laws. But God's law is there. And it's even not only in the Old Testament, it's in the New Testament. And, and I've got the scriptures here in front of me and we've said them before, but there are so many cited. I mean, starting with uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse 22, Leviticus 20, verse 13. And that's then moving on to the New Testament, which talks about it in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 10, Romans chapter 1, verses 26 to 28. So there's a lot to talk about here. Right. Uh, but what I would like to say, I'm not homophobic. You know, I, I, I know some um, homosexual people and they're l so lovely people. But for some reason, this particular character 
has attacked Revelation or, or myself for many years. In fact, if the truth be known, they were the ones that actually complained to Ofcom in the first place. And Ofcom became very familiar with these people and knew that they were trouble, uh, stirrers of trouble, okay? And we decided to get a Spanish license, okay? Because uh, there was more freedom of speech. But I still operate under the spirit mm -hmm. of the law of mm -hmm. Ofcom. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, because there are things that we, we say and do in our lives and, and no one's guilt, uh, it's innocent of, of falling foul of God's laws. We're, we're all sinners, as I said. But how do we handle this topic of letting the homosexual know that his or her lifestyle is not acceptable to God? It might be acceptable to man, but there's condemnation that is coming and, 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 and a day of judgment, which they might one day turn around and say, do you know, I'm really glad that Revelation TV was there. I'm really glad you said something, even though it was uncomfortable. When I first read the Bible, there were things in there that I saw about myself which were deplorable, and I had to change. Well, I wanted to change. Let me put it like that. Probably a difference there. The gay community that I see uh, and um, is evidence that from the letters that f uh, and emails that are followed from the complainants, uh, that they don't want to change. That's the bottom line. So what do you say to someone like this email that's come in tonight? Um, do you at Revelation TV believe that gay people are not worthy of life as stated in the Bible? And it says, can you answer this question with a simple yes or no? Um, I would say that that law is God's law and for him to decide, not for us. We don't uh, take God's law and say, well, this is acceptable, that isn't. God's law is yes and amen, and it's what he said yesterday is the same today. We're, we're all guilty, or, or we're all deserving of death, every one of us, because if we're in a sinful state and we're unrepentant, we all deserve death. But it's only through repenting and through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are and can have our sins forgiven. Mm. So it's not as simple as yes or no. I, as Howard Conder, we, we, we don't act that way. We don't put people to death. Even the law um, that God says very clearly, and again in the New Testament, that uh, someone who takes the life of somebody else should forfeit their own life. Mm. Yeah. Doug, good, good to have you, and thank you for talking with, uh, with, with Alan. Mm. I mean, Alan just touched tonight on he could have expanded and gone up on about a whole load of stuff. Yes. Um, and, and in a sense, we're, we're almost te dealing with two things tonight. We're dealing with the Terence Higgins Trust and the material they put out, as mm -hmm. well as dealing with the actual complaint against Revelation TV. But people who are listening, I'm sure majority of our viewers, are absolutely horrified that mm -hmm. a, a, a body, which is a, a registered charity, the Terence Higgins Trust, is putting material out mm. such as that. I found it quite interesting. The complainant actually says, uh, this is, he says, you, Howard, accuse gay people of indulging in practices which anyone would find revolting. And yet, yes. the very things you were talking about, Terence Higgins Trust I, are saying I, it's I, okay I, to do. I made a note of that to, to, to underline, indeed, in, in this conversation, because they actually say, uh, that, that, um, that men already doing the practices referred to. In other words, they are saying, we know pri primarily the gay community are getting involved in these practices. What we are showing them is how they can do it safely. Uh, and so these things are going on. And, and, OK, the fact that they go on, as, as Howard has already said, the fact that they go on, they go on. But why write a book? And, of course, what we haven't shown is, is the graphicness, yeah. not only in the words. I mean, I'm sure some would have been horrified at the words that Alan was quoting from that book. If we showed them some of the images that were in there, they would be absolutely devastated. Well, we, we had a, a discussion, didn't we, as to whether we should put yes. some of the images on screen tonight yes. and then cover up certain parts, yes. and in the end we decided, it's no, we weren't even going yes. to go down yeah. that route. And I, I obviously thought that there were indecent uh, pictures and also what was going on. I w maybe I should have clarified it a bit more that any then I'm going to get into trouble with whatever I say, that any decent person would find them abhorrent, mm -hmm. these practices. But obviously, 
uh, it shows you the state of the homosexual community has slipped so far down the moral road. I know people won't even like that, but it's got to such a stage that they think this is acceptable to put on a website. I'd be, I'd be embarrassed. I'd be ashamed. This is, there's no shame. You call it gay pride. In fact, where is the gay shame in this? There is no shame. Yeah. Uh, and I, if I had uh, yes. sexual practices which are, are abhorrent to God, I would be ashamed. I wouldn't be advertising them on my website. Can, can I just bring a thing in because you asked the question of yep. were they worthy of life and, and, and Howard absolutely is not dodging the issue by saying in the end that is God's issue, it's not our prerogative to take or to, or to keep life. Um, God, God said that but what we're saying of course all the time and indeed which Howard went on clearly to say on that clip that we saw this morning and, and, and we just went for a few minutes into that uh, uh, clip but it goes on longer that we are in the day of grace and we all know of gay people of immoral uh, heterosexuals as well yes. who have repented and because we're living in a day of grace God forgives and he says in the Old Testament the sinner shall die but he who repents shall live mm. um, and and yes I think we, we certainly would long for the complainant to be one of those that repented no they're proud and many others will be but we are living in a day of grace and though they can come to know the forgiveness and the grace mm. of our God and be set free from things that bind them like this. Yeah, can I just read the scripture? Because it, it actually deals with both aspects. Those that are not going to be worthy to inherit the kingdom of God and those who actually have had their uh, sins forgiven mm. and uh, along the lines of what we're talking about tonight. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. It says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Okay, so that's the unrighteous. So who are the unrighteous? It goes into de defining those. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, okay, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's a lot of people condemned right there and then, including myself, okay? Such were some of you, but you have been washed and you've been sanctified, been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. Because they've, we've, those of us who've actually recognized our sin and, uh, and genuinely uh, repented before our Lord, and our sins are forgiven. But there is this determination and almost uh, belligerent attitude towards God uh, that we are going to do our own thing whether you like it or not. And this is why in Romans chapter 1 it says God gave them over to their lustful desires and that those who practice such things, as I say, not only are willing to do it openly, but recommend it to others. And this is what I feel that the Terence Higging Trust was doing, recommending their, what is abominable in God's sights, um, their lifestyle and making it uh, not common knowledge and available to all and sundry. Okay, this is an, an email that's come in from a doctor, Dr. Christopher Shell from Hounslow. Not worthy of life is not a literal translation of Romans 1. It's more like those who do such things deserve death. There is no comparison between homosexuality and being black. People are born black, there are no homosexual babies. The activists know this. After gay marriage is brought in, our school children will be taught ever more uh, that such society is Tom, Terence Higgins Trust are mainstream. The public have been taught that for 30 years. The Terence Higgins Trust are directly responsible, according to this doctor, for a large number of HIV AIDS cases uh, through their active normalization of such behavior. How on earth can a simple statement of facts be called hate? This is a matter of reason, not emotion, says that particular um, email. Here's somebody who says, I fully support Howard and Revelation TV. I'm very annoyed. My taxes are being used to support those, um, what she calls uh, uh, disgusting inhuman acts, not in my name. What, what can be done about Terence Higgins Trust? I mean, we're a registered charity, therefore we have to, to keep within, within the law. 
the Terence Higgins Trust, they're a registered charity. I, I, I know that Alan has complained to the charity commissioners about them. Um, I would imagine some people listening will want to complain to their MP about them. Are, are there things we can do? I, I think we need to, and, and I think because charity, the Charity Commission do take seriously complaints, so you put a constructive complaint together that your money is being spent, as we've said, in, in this way, in, in, in things which we, we do not feel is right to do. Um, they will look at it, of course, it totally depends on, on their um, uh, charity document as to what they, they are there to do, and if they are there, as they say, to uh, promote safer sex, um, maybe they would consider that this is promoting safer sex, i.e. they're going to do these things, therefore you know, we make them do it. So what will happen to that complaint? But I do think we need to raise the issue. We do need to raise the issue, should the, such publications be available freely on the internet? And, and this goes back to a much wider issue, of course, on the internet, of all that which is available, and that young people can get hold of it. Hmm. OK. There's an awful lot of different sins described in the Bible. Uh, I mean, if we look up the word hate, you, you'll see that God says he hates lying, he hates double-mindedness, he hates um, falsehood. Is it that we, we particularly home in upon homosexuality and say this is something that God finds an abominable, or, or is there a reason why we seem to spend a lot of time talking about it? Well, in the beginning of Revelation TV, it seemed to come up quite a lot. And, and I'll, I'll be honest with you that we, my wife and I have got to the stage, especially when we're doing our mornings, that we're really fed up with mentioning it because we've, we've stated uh, what God's Word says enough times. We've, we've, we've actually talked to with each other and said, look, we're not gonna mention it again. We, we keep getting drawn on it. And it's like they purposely target us, the spawn of Satan as he signs himself of us and the proud sodomite. Uh, in the beginning, I would write to them and I try to reason with them. Uh, and uh, you know, it, I, I was never hateful, never. Um, I've got those on record. So if anybody wanted to check them, you'll see the hate, believe it or not, was coming the other way. They're full of hate. All the things that they say about me, this particular couple, they're so venomous. And, and, uh, and I think Tim Vince has got them and others. We've got them on record. Here, we've got the proof of how they feel about us. We don't feel that way about them. Mm. I've got what your question was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, is it, Gordon, though, oh, yes. that they are taking the issue yes. to the Christians more? I mean, yes. the, you, know, you talk about the greedy, you talk about the others. Well, no, those things are going on, and we will go out and we will preach the gospel to whoever will listen. And they may reject the gospel, they may turn around, but they are not having a campaign against, yes. as it were, the oh, Christians. Yeah. Is this the case? With, and I think, I think the answer, I think Howard's already indicated quite clearly that that is the case. I think so. I mean, there's, a, you know, there's not a big campaign for, of group out there who are saying, let's lie more. There's not a big campaign group which is saying, let's be gluttonous more. But there is a big campaign group who are saying, let's sidelines and push Christianity and their views out of the way, and let's make this into the mainstream. And that does mm -hmm. seem to be coming from the gay community. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we're saying as Christians, on behalf of the gay, uh, on behalf of the, the Christian community, hang on, this is what God's word says. And vis-a-vis and -vis the traditions that our, our uh, country is built upon, and we, we need to hang on in, onto them. Mm. You see, and you know, d just thinking, you know, 10 years ago, we would not be having this discussion because it would never be allowed to come out in the open. Now, isn't it incredible? When we start saying, hold on a minute, guys, stop there, we're, we're the ones that are at fault. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. we, we can't say, no, marriage is a man and a woman, and that's what it is. We're not allowed to say that anymore. And it really is quite incredible that we are now the baddies, uh, and, and yet, at the same time, we're not hateful towards them. Well, I know we get emails saying we are, but we're not, and we all know Howard, and we, we, we know exactly his heart. Yeah. But it's incredible, Do I really. mention it during the day? Am I consumed with uh, it? No. I mean, yeah. I, it's the last thing. Things. I would, I would, yeah, I'd, <laughs> football. I'd love to be able to just drop it, but mm. they won't let go. And the reason is, I believe, is what is written in the, the book of Romans there, chapter one, is that they want to gain 
everyone's approval for what they're doing. And it's just irksome to them that they, this sticks in their throat because God's word says very clearly that it's an abomination and a detestable thing. And that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. It, it comes down to what, what we understand is God's word, which is the Bible, and what it has to say. So in a sense, it has nothing to do with us. It's, it's what God is actually saying. Mm -hmm. how, do, how do we express love? Because that's, that's where we're coming from. We want to love the people, even though God's word says something which, which says what you're doing is wrong. And, and I guess the hardest part for, for many and for many Christians who are watching is to know how to do that. Love and yet disagree. Because I'm sure for, for people who are watching, who've got sons, who've got daughters, who've got uh, uh, neighbors, who've got friends, uh, family members, um, who are involved in, in homosexual and lesbian activity, and, and they want to carry on loving them, even though they disagree. How do we express mm. that? Well, first of all, we're all made in God's image, and we're all uh, create a creation of God. Um, but we don't believe in evolution. So we're, in that sense, we're all equal. And the homosexual is, uh, is, is so important to God as, as anyone, any other person. And they're not second-rate citizens or anything like that. Uh, we, are, are, we are obligated to love our fellow man. Uh, to love our God uh, is the first and the greatest commandment. Okay? But to love our neighbor as ourself is the second and most important out of all of the scriptures. Right? So how do we do that? You know, if you knew there was an impending disaster coming, uh, and we believe the day of ju God's judgment is, is, is going to be an awesome and fearful day, that is it not love, loving, to actually warn those who are going to fall foul of that particular day? If you knew that they were on the path mm. to destruction, as Jesus points out in his sermons, it... To, to not say anything would be a miss of us. And it's just the same, you would point out to me, if, if you saw me on a path that was going down a slippery road that was sinful, you would say something to me, would you not? And I too to you. And, and by reading the word of God, and it says someone has to preach this message, it's like, don't shoot the messenger, please. It's the message of God. And he has appointed a time for people to hear the word and message. And such a program as this is such a vehicle to reach people. Hopefully, there'll be those that are uh, watching from the Terence Higgin Trust, etc. that might, something might sit right with them and convict them of their sin. I, I, I find it very interesting. I mean, there was no record of Jesus talking to a homosexual, okay? But there is a record of Jesus talking to adulterers and, and, and others. And in John 8, where Jesus deals with that woman in, in, in adultery, the law said she had to be stoned. Um, and they set her up, they set the whole thing up because, you know, the man should have been stoned as well, but obviously the whole thing was set up. Jesus knew it was a set up. And so he, he was going to show her love. He was going to show her grace by giving her a second chance. And so he, he, he you know, he says, you know, he didn't he, he, it. no, he, he said, no, he said, who's out sin cast the first stone? Because none of them did. He then goes and says, does no man condemn you? And Jesus says, neither do I. Go your way and sin no more. So In maybe you've just answered this. I, we're running out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> but I was going to read lots of emails, yeah. this particular one. Brett says, I'm gay and a backslidden Christian. I've tried coming back to Christ, but have found most churches I, I've been to have, left, have really done little to embrace me and make me feel part of a church. I've always felt like a sinner that nobody in the church knows how to deal with. I feel that Christians are always quick to condemn gay people, but where is the support and help we need to get out of this lifestyle? I've certainly not found in any church I've tried. Why aren't churches trying to reach out to the gay community instead of purely condemning us all the time? I, I, I'd absolutely. really appreciate it. And there are groups, and, and, and if the, 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 the writer of that gets in contact with we, we will give them some contact details of, of people that would do it. And absolutely, we shouldn't condemn them. Yes, it's wrong. Yes, go your way and sin no more. But at that point, while there was still life, Jesus did not condemn the woman. She had the glorious opportunity to change. Yeah. 
Jude, the, the scripture in Jude, I don't, I don't know if we've got time to actually read this because I know that sometimes people would say, oh, well, God isn't against homosexuals and Sodom and Gomorrah, but well, it wasn't destroyed because of their sexual conduct. Uh, Jude actually points it out a little bit uh, clearer. J uh, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, since they, in the same way as these, indulged in gross immorality and went after strange flesh, are exhibited as an example in undergoing the punishment of eternal fire. Um, that's from Jude chapter seven, if verse you want. Seven. Yeah, verse seven, sorry. Okay, we've got two minutes left. Let me just read mm. some of the emails. We've got time for that. Uh, uh, Carol says, in Howard's defense, I can remember him showing and empathizing with gay men being thrown off the top of high buildings in countries around Israel. Howard was appalled at the practice. I'm glad he had the courage to, to show it. Um, Howard, thank God for people like you. What kind of society have we become? It's not there many years ago that homosexuality was illegal, and it says keep up the good work that you're doing. Um, David says, as darkness increases, the true light shines brighter. Thank God for Revelation TV. Uh, Martin from the Isle of Wight says, I'm not a believer and disagree with most of the views you give. I would not think Howard would wish harm on anyone. And it would be a bloody shame, he says, to see Revelation TV go. We're not planning to go. And uh, this says, Jesus, Jesus' blood covers all. Let's stop highlighting others and let God deal with them. Stop condemning others. Remember the woman mm -hmm. caught mm -hmm. in yeah, adultery. Um, and Chris says, I would like to offer support to Howard and tell him to keep his head up. A new world order is being set up as we speak with its foundation on homosexuality, debauchery, and every other abomination you can think of with the support of governments in nearly every country. We need to speak out and be strong in Christ. Mm -hmm. And there's lots more where that's coming in too. I'm not sure. I think we have about 30 seconds or so left. A final word to you, Howard. You know, I if there was a way that I didn't have to share the Word of God in a blunt way that we do, I would love there to be an easy way out. But God has put it on our hearts to declare His Word, as uncomfortable as it is, and uh, just to reiterate that I am a sinner just like the rest of us. God bless you. Read the Word of God for yourself, and hopefully His Spirit will help you to take it on board. Bye.